Previously on The Great Ace Attorney 2. This dagger, which was so cruelly used to end the life of the victim, has no trace of poison anywhere along its blade. Who would appear we have a genuine witness to this wicked crime? God damn. How often does this happen? The evidence and testimony are extremely compelling. I believe we may be close to a verdict. My ass. This pen was found at the scene of Miss Brett's death. In fact, the murdered victim was gripping it in her hand as she died. Shit, did he do it? Well, Minnie Mouse Sign, how do you respond? <laughs> yes, you did! Yes, you did! Alright, back to it, I guess. Welcome back, all my friends, to the wonderful Great Ace Attorney. This is part two of the game. It's called Resolve Now. Anyway, we're talking to witnesses. Uh, I don't remember. This is like a new day, so I don't need to see what we're talking about here because I don't kind of remember. I don't kind of remember. Ha! I asked the English woman for an interview, but she declined, so I left the hut without making a fuss. Then, watching secretly from outside, I saw the woman being stabbed and the other witnesses come running. The detective realized that the victim still had a pulse, so he ran off to fetch help. This is like changing up so much here. Because we thought she died within like a couple of minutes, and yet... I guess a lot can happen in a couple of minutes, but still. That's when this writer man here asked the woman a very significant question. But he didn't say anything about that in his testimony, which is why many, memo many memoism demands I reveal it now. Okay, so what's the fluff dialogue here? Poor Sosuke san has been fidgeting constantly in the stand next to many men of san Yes, like a naughty child who's waiting for punishment from his parents. It rather reminds me of you when you were younger. What? I was like that? <laughs> Never mind that now. Never mind that now. Now, now. The question is, how far can we trust this reporter's account of events? We must focus our energies on gathering information and establishing facts. Sure. No problem. Might not have been the worst idea to, like, in between videos, look at the actual uh, stuff that we have in here. Because we have, like, all this. We have the beach hub plan. We have the murder weapon. Anyway. Um, I'll, I'm just going to press for now and see where it takes us. You asked her for an interview, you say? Well, of course I did. I wanted to ask her about the incident she was involved in at the end of last year. About the case in which Dr. Wilson lost his life. Yeah. That's not the way I phrased it. Many memoism calls for straight talking. Why did you murder Dr. Wilson? Is how I put it to her. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that sort of talking is as straight as a ruler. <laughs> Jeez. Ask every question as if you're asking for a menu in a restaurant, I say. It's the best way. A veteran at the paper taught me that. Oh, do we know this veteran? Uh, how did Miss Brett answer? She's told me to F off. With one simple phrase. Mystery is a woman's charm. Well, you know, you're not wrong there. Oh, that told me, so I waltzed right out of there. Really? Something about that doesn't quite seem to fit together. Uh, leave every room as if you're waltzing in a dance hall, I say. It's the best way. A veteran at the paper taught me that. Ugh, is he gonna say that like 50 times? <sighs> she did say there seemed to be like something wrong with that, but... Alright, well, we'll, we'll come back to that later. Maybe. <laughs> that was very persistent of you, considering that Miss Brett had just turned you away. Well, a man never gives up, you know? Persistence wins the prize! Oh, don't. <laughs> uh, maybe... Any, many memoists will tell you that. Let them think you've left, and then just when they lower their guard, that's when you swoop in for the scoop. I mean, he's talking about a scoop here, not hooking up, so... In the fruits of your labor are all too apparent in this telling photograph. Though I'm sure the young Yoko student would rather not be reminded of this damning evidence. Actually, no, I wouldn't. Well, I'd rather not be reminded of it. Actually, it's thanks to that photograph that we managed to identify this witness. And now that you found me, I'll tell you whatever you want to know. I got nothing to hide. Mm, I'm sure. <laughs> Please do go ahead, witness. The court is eager to hear what you have to say. As am I. Try to stop me, Smeed. Please try to stop me, try to stop me. There's a story to tell here, and I'm going to tell it. Well, that's what you've been doing. The detective realized the victim still had a pulse, so he ran off to finish help. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. And Sosuke-san remained behind in the hut. That's right, yep! Our Arthur friend here! Our Arthur friend here! When I was a kid, I used to think it was Arthur. The word author, I didn't realize they were two different words. 
was a blabbering wreck, shaking all over from his head to his toes, mustache twitching, eyes bulging. What do you expect? You, you don't know the uh, terrifying troubles that tempted me whilst traveling abroad. I forgot. I don't know what voice I gave this. Back behind baleful bars, they'll be coming for me surely. That's all I could think. I felt as though I were gasping for air, drowning in a sea of cold sweat. Ugh. Poor Soski saw his experience in London have scarred him deeply. <laughs> London calling, as they say. As the world seemed to close it around me, I quietly recited a prayer to Amida Buddha. Eternal emptiness, empty eternity. The end is coming for me. You know, you might as well have chanted Chickadee China, the Chinese chicken. You have a drumstick and your brain stops ticking. No sutras are to resound in my courtroom, please. Yeah, I'm scared of that shit. And now we come to the crucial part. That's when it happened. The crucial part, you say. Well, let's go. That's when this writer man here asks a woman a very significant Hold question. Alright, what question did he ask? What question? What exactly did he say? Well, now you should hear that from the horse's mouth, I think. The horse. Don't you, Mr. Writer Man? I don't think he's gonna tell us. Teeth. As with it, you yokel hack. Wow. What did you say to her? What did you say to the dying English woman? Will you marry me? Well, in truth, I'd been catching crabs at the watch's edge and building castles in the sand, you see? Yeah, he didn't mention that about the crabs. <laughs> well, the seaside is a place to be at leisure, I suppose, even for a grown man. But then all of a sudden, from that little beach hut, a young girl's panic-stricken cries for help pierced the air. Uh, it pierced her lung. Could she do that? Uh, <laughs> I ran up the beach to see what was happening to find the defendant leaning over the collapsed victim. As soon as Inspector Hosanaga saw Miss Brett on the ground, he sprinted off to get help. And then just a moment later, I heard a faint moan. A moan from the dead Englishwoman. Teeth! I nearly jumped out of my skin! God damn it! But what'd you ask her, Sosuke san? To the point, sir. I asked her, who did this to you? Oh? Don't protract this any longer! How did the woman respond? I'm, I'm getting into this now! She didn't! She said nothing in response! But, 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 the... She said nothing. Well, then why is this important? Like, why have we been doing this? When in the stand, you will answer the questions asked of you unambiguously. Now, without evasion or reticence, I demand that you amend your testimony. Whose testimony is doing what here now? I will! I will! Let's <laughs> name that movie. Uh, I asked her, who did the... Well, so now we're talking to this guy. Jeez. So, if I go back to the first statement, it's... Okay, alright. Cool. I asked her, who did this to you? But she never replied. Alright, we gotta press. So you tried to find out who the culprit was? Yes, I did. He who asks a question is a fool for a minute. He who does not remains a fool forever. I, this line kind of stunned me a little bit. <laughs> wow. That's, uh... I kind of like that. <laughs> and having been labeled a criminal twice during my time in Great Britain, I was quick to make up my mind. Teeth! Better to be a fool for a minute than to remain a fool in prison forever. However, you've indicated that the victim failed to respond. Is that correct? I know why. I know why the English woman said nothing. Because she couldn't. She was ignoring me. Because my stupid mustache. Because I'm Japanese. Oh my god! It's another one of these. Oh dear, Sosuke san has really developed a dislike for the English, it seems. Having read the reports on his time in Great Britain, I can't say I'm surprised at his xenophobia. He should be playing Xenoblade. But the English woman didn't ignore you at all! Did she, Mr. Rider Man? Hmm, well, yes, I. alright. She did respond in a manner of speaking, I suppose. No, so statement number five belongs to you too now. She just lifted a trembling finger and pointed in the direction of the defendant. What? Hold it. Really? That can't be right. Miss Brett pointed a finger at the defendant? Soski san, is that really true? Please tell me it isn't. But he just said it though, it has to be. It's not easy to stand here and say this, but when we first entered the beach hut. Uh the English woman was sprawled on the floor before us, with the Sunni girl standing on the far side of her. And when I asked who did this to you, the 
the English woman summoned her last ounce of strength to point a trembling finger at the back of the hut. I... Are we sure she wasn't pointing to someone behind the hut? Like, maybe she was pointing past the culprit, huh? Which was, can be denied, in the direction of the student girl who stands accused today. Crap. No. Sosuke-san, why on earth did you neglect to mention this in your original testimony? But, fiddlesticks, I say! This is not a British court of law, you dumb shit! You will respond in Japanese! Oh. Yes, of course! Ha! <laughs> ah, uh, you're ways to go, well, yeah, I can't do that! The English woman did point her finger towards the back of the hut, but... The hut butt. But I was trembling, and she was trembling, and everything was a blur. You like that band Blur? They have this song called Trouble in the Message Center. It's, it reminds me of a Mega Man song or something. And thinking about it, I feel as though perhaps she was pointing in a slightly different direction. Thank you! Actually, no, not slightly, in a very different direction! They blah, blah, my throat's leaving out of my... To where the throat, to, to, to where the throat girl was standing. To somewhere at the back of the hut where nobody was standing at all. You mean that your memory of events and the direction in which the victim was pointing are both unclear? They are unclear, my master. Well, I didn't even have to, like... Your Excellency, sure this proves the matter beyond all reasonable doubt. Yes, the woman may barely have been conscious, and yes, perhaps her finger wavered slightly. But there could be no doubt that this was an attempt by the victim to confirm the identity of her assailant. Why? Because as the court can see, there was no one other than the accused in the direction the victim was pointing. Well, that's the thing, though. She remembers where it happened. She probably thought the guy was still there. Like, she didn't get to look over and see, right? <laughs> it is now abundantly clear that no one besides the accused could possibly have committed this crime. I'm inclined to agree. Damn. I didn't want to. In the absence of any credible argument to the contrary, I believe we can now conclude this trial. No. No! That's six. I am... Man, I, you're gonna have to, like... Oh. I'm gonna have to go see a doctor after this. You're gonna do some serious damage to your hippocampus. The headlines writing itself. Shut up! Oh my god, dude. Dashing lawyers helps dash 92 point across the whole page. We'll do an X-ray edition. This is a serious blow, Susano. Unless we're able to identify the true culprit and substantiate our claim with evidence, the judge will give his ruling, and the trial will be over. But that's impossible, Father. We don't even know how the crime was committed yet. Impossible though the task may seem. We have no choice. We must think back over everything we've learned. Uh-oh. Here come the police cars. I better go hide. Somewhere in all those details, I'm confident we will find the clue we need. Ray gave us her account of how events unfolded in the defendant's antechamber before the trial resumed. She told us what happened at the precise moment Miss Brett was killed. Yeah, I, I don't mind this flashback, because I'd like to see it again. The English woman was sitting in the back of the hut, listening to what I was saying. And then a moment later... She suddenly got to her feet. So she was probably stabbed while she was sitting down. She stood up suddenly reacting to it. Yeah. Oh. How could Miss Brett have been stabbed in the back in a beach hut that was empty but for herself and Ray? Somewhere amid all the information we've gathered so far, there must be an answer to that question. Well, uh, he did the same thing with the knife that he did with the camera. He pointed it through the reeds. So the gallant yokel student's luck finally runs out. I can't say I'm surprised. In that case, I am ready to deliver my final verdict on this matter. This is a crucial turning point now. If I can't establish what really happened, it's over. Where was the real culprit hiding? And how did he or she stab the victim? I know how. Objection! We had to go now. Like, this is our last chance. It's not the time to be saying, I don't know, or wondering. Your Excellency, I respectfully ask you to postpone your adjudication for the time being. Oh, what a wonderful vocabulary, sir. To what end, counsel? The defense would like to present the court with an alternative theory. An alternative theory that can explain who the victim was actually trying to implicate with her dying gesture. An alternative theory? <laughs> None exists! Objection! Uh, there's no such thing as a theory that doesn't exist, like a theory... <laughs> there was someone else present at the scene who could have committed this crime. Are we actually, seriously, we haven't even considered the possibility that he stabbed her and took the picture? 
And the victim, Miss Brett, tried to reveal who it was that was around her at the time. By mustering all her remaining strength and pointing a trembling finger in the killer's direction. This is fiction, fantasy! No, it's reality, bud. Just get ready. Very well, as you seem so sure of yourself, Counsel, I am prepared to hear your alternative theory. So, young Ryu Naruhoto. Yes, Your Excellency. You will present your latest theory to the court by means of this plan. At the moment the victim was stabbed, where exactly are you proposing the culprit was concealed? Oh, baby. Right back here. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Take that! Take that! Naruhoto-san would never give up, and I'm a Naruhoto now. I just married him and took his name. The true culprit who fatally stabbed Miss Brett was concealed in this location here. Are you mad, Counsel? You're suggesting the culprit was outside the hut? Oh, you look a little surprised there, buddy. Oh my god, he looks like Super Macho Man. <laughs> Order! Knock it off! But student lawyer Naruhoto-san Esquire, that makes no sense at all. You, you just pointed out the exact spot where I was hiding to get my scoop snap. Yeah, well... If I didn't see any suspicious individuals lording about, I can swear to that. Obviously, if the culprit had been outside the hut... There's no way that he or she could have stabbed the victim who was inside the hut. Actually, Prosecutor Alchi, there is a way. Mm hmm And in point of fact, the defense can provide evidence strongly suggesting this is precisely the way Miss Brett was killed. You're bluffing! You're, you're bluffing, you yokel! How many times are we going to say the word? We need a yokel counter all up in here. The defense's assertion is clearly too fantastical for the court to comprehend. You will need to give us more guidance, counsel. What piece of evidence corroborates your theory that the victim was stabbed from outside the hut? Um... Yeah, like, there, there is kind of a, a crack there. I did notice that. Is that what we need to go with, then? I think it... The original photographic print of the crime scene? Yes. It's clearly visible in this print. The trace of the fatal thrust that was delivered from outside the beach hut... Oh, man. You take us for fools. There's no hint of any such thing. Oh, but no. I'm not sure that everyone present would agree. <laughs> Someone, at least, appears to have noticed what it is that I'm referring to. Yeah. Must have hit pretty close to the mark to get her all riled up like that, huh, kid? Counsel, once again, I must call on you to be explicit and stop quoting Star Wars. Where on this photograph is the trace of the stabbing which you claim took place from outside the hut? A trace of the stabbing? I was going with the assumption that he stabbed, like, through this thing, but... Maybe this is, like, a weird wording thing? Well, my first instinct is to click this, because that's why I presented that in the first place, so maybe... Look closely just here. Yeah, baby! Oh, maybe because... Okay, so this is, like, after it happened, so there would still be a crack there. Yeah, I see what they're saying. In the screen in the back of the hut, you can see the effects of a blade having been forced to the reeds. More than a blade, probably a hand, too. No, I can't. I can't see any such thing. Well, you're old. It's true that the hut in question had four walls, as you'd expect. However, by parting the reeds, a knife blade could easily penetrate them. He did a little more than part them, though, when he took the picture, so, like, <laughs> Yeah, hmm. The true culprit actually stabbed the victim from outside the beach hut. Ah! Oh. And if everyone present had the scene, there is only one person who could have done this. That. This, that. Only one person who was directly outside the hut when Miss Brett was killed. Rayton Mini Memo San, it could only have been you! I'm still not 100% convinced that it was, though. Like, some, uh, some feels off. <laughs> <laughs> his hat falls on his face, it's so funny. Because, <laughs> like, to him, it's just all darkness. And... This preposterous idea leaves me almost speechless. Just look at that photograph again. The victim lies almost exactly in the center of the beach hut, does she not? Yeah, because she fell forward after he got stabbed because of her. Are we to assume, as part of this farcical, farcical scenario, that the assailant was a knife thrower? Objection. No, she was a knife retainer. Oh, a knife wound retainer. We're not. If you recall the testimony of the defendant about the events just before the victim's death... Right... 
Inside the beach hut, I confronted Miss Brett, and she just sat on a stool in the back of the hut, smiling sweetly as me as she knew she was untouchable. A stool? Oh, I, I, I've seen those before. <laughs> Have another look at the photograph. Look at this graph! Well, we had to say it eventually. The slit in the reed screen. Would align perfectly with the back of a person who was sitting on that stool. Yep. My word. So in fact the victim was killed while sitting on that stool. By a stab wound to her back delivered through the reed screen. Ah! Ah! Having been attacked, Miss Britt rose to her feet instinctively. But then, unable to speak, she collapsed on the floor in the middle of the hut. Before the defendant, Memba, 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 Memba sans appalled eyes. <laughs> And that, Your Excellency, is the truth of what happened on the beach that day. Are we done? We might be done here. Maybe this is it. By your silence, many memos on. Many memos on. I take it that you don't deny the charge. Hmm. This... this is... absurd! <laughs> he has had that hat on his face for three minutes now. That will do! It would appear that we have a tacit admission of guilt from the witness. Uh... I wouldn't call that a confession, but... Okay. Accordingly, this court has successfully established the truth of this matter, which means that the defendant, Mimbami-san, is innocent of the crime. Oh, thank goodness. I finally made him cave. <laughs> I must say, I've never been more proud. No, this can't be! The Ouchie Clan can't... What am I growth? My growth of hope! It wasn't all an apparition? I can't accept this! I won't! <clears throat> uh, I see no reason for you to be complaining, sir. You always lose. You should be used to this by now. You're not Sebulba. You don't always win! No, you don't. I see no reason for the continuance of this trial. I will therefore move to conclude proceedings by delivering my final verdict and... I knew it. There's something else. <laughs> this this has got to be one of the funniest things I've ever seen in a, in a Phoenix Wright game. Just look at this! You don't, you're not supposed to wear your hat on your face! You dumbass! Ah! Oh. This is how the highest court in our mighty empire delivers justice, is it? With thunderous applause? Suppressing well-meaning citizens' freedom to speak and branding them as criminals? <coughs> but we've established that the victim was stabbed from outside the hut, you dumbass, through the red screen walls. Have you not been paying attention? And no one but you was in place at the time to have this hand on the hilt of the blade. I mean, that's the thing, like, I don't... Uh... Somebody could have done it, snuck away, and then him get there, you know, later and take the picture. Like, some time did pass. It's not impossible for someone else to have done it, I don't think. That's perfectly logical deduction. So your argument hits. Take that hat off your face! Your argument hinges on the location of whether sta whoever stabbed the English one, does it? Oh, there we go. Well, it seems a little irrelevant now. Irrelevant? Where she was stabbed? How she was stabbed? It doesn't matter. I mean, whether she was stabbed at all makes no difference, if you think about it. After all, I, I don't know what you're getting at here. This trial's already shown the whole thing hinges on something else. What happened here? What happened to this guy? He got so confident, Soski's still like looking around all shifty. What are you talking about? Suspenders, dude. It's all about the suspenders. Brace yourself, little man. I'm talking about the fact that everything's changed. Because of the dirt you dug up. Yeah, wow. I... I feel like I should know what he's getting at here. <clears throat> I, d I mean, I had a feeling, but I couldn't really put my finger on it. What's your explaining? I'm talking about the poison, of course. Oh. <sighs> okay, so I had this theory in one of the last videos that the poison didn't actually... Because they said there was no poison on the knife, right? And yet her eyes still did the thing, so I think she was still poisoned. Um, didn't it say the poison could also be, like, ingested? Let me see. <laughs> Even the smallest amount entering the body, either via the mouth or a wound. Okay, yeah, so by the mouth. Well, there was that spilled drink next to her. I think the poison 
was in the drink. So, she still got poisoned, but maybe the stabbing was just something else, I don't know. Let's ask the professor for a comment on the situation, shall we? I understand that a deadly poison you were developing was stolen from your laboratory, correct? Oops, I said laboratory. <laughs> At least I didn't say lavatory. There's plenty of poison in there. It's been shown that this poison was administered to the victim, Brett, Miss Brett, is that right? That is correct. The unusual constriction of the victim's pupils are a sure sign that this particular poison was used. I see, I see. So, presumably that means... ...that the victim already had the poison in her body before she was stabbed. Uh-oh. Well, I mean, this kind of just goes right along with it, though. Given that her pupils were clearly constricted, it seems highly likely, yes. If she had been dead already, the poison could not have circulated in her blood. Uh-huh. <laughs> ah, how refreshing to hear the argument of a metropolitan mind. It's better than a metropolitan mutant of arc. I mean, I had to say it. Precisely, it matters not a jot who stabbed whom and who's backing with whose blade. Because quite simply, the English woman's life was taken not by the knife, but by the poison. Objection. But that can be explained by the poison being on the blade, as I already know. Oh, they figured out that it wasn't on the blade, though. Forgotten already, have we, Yokel? During these very proceedings, the laboratory of the professor at your side assisted in proving that the blade of the weapon used to attack the victim had no trace of poison on it whatsoever. Crap. So let me get this down. The facts, as skillfully established by the defense in this trial, turn out to be a headline making red herring. Is that about right? Put your hat back on your face. Well. Ah, 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 seven. Seven blumps on my head now. Seven blumps. Order! But where does this leave us? How in that case did the poison enter the victim's body? There's an undeniably obvious answer to that. The lady most likely imbibed it. I have never heard that word before in my life. I assume he means drunk. You mean she drank it? Yes. Have another look at the photograph here. Okay, here we go. I mean, we're going straight to it then, yeah. A bottle of carbonated water and a glass had been knocked onto the sandy floor of the beach hut. The poison could have been slipped into either. But that would have had to have been way before, then. Well, what do you know? Look at these dashing eyes. This will make a great front page shot. We don't know anything about the drink, or... Oh, hey, why the bewitching stare? <laughs> After all, I'm the last person you should be looking at. It would make no sense at all that I poisoned the woman, would it? I mean, that's been established already. Somebody still stabbed her, though, right? Hold it. Ugh. Established? What are you talking about? Hmm. Don't tell me you've forgotten. That's a little hard to believe, given that the person who established it was you. Ah. <laughs> Shit. Mm. Oh, let me capture those wide eyes. This is prime press fodder, this is. Stop taking pictures! Oh god, when the witnesses move around a lot like that, it actually does make you uncomfortable. It's really weird. It would seem that this trial is not destined to end yet, after all. I hereby call upon the witness to give further testimony. More testimony, huh? It's a good thing we stopped when we did. Holy crap. Let me get a shot of that magnificent beard. You claim it to be impossible that you were the one responsible for administering the poison to the victim. You will explain to the court your own testimony the basis upon which you make such a claim. I'm a turno, and I'm a man. I've never tried to run or hide from anything in my life. And I'm not about to start now, because that's many memoism. For a brief moment, I thought I'd illuminated the truth, but it slipped right back into obscurity again. Just where is this trial going to take us? No. Hmm. <laughs> to be continued. I was expecting it to be continued there. That's kind of like the line you would expect to see. Oh yes, I stabbed the English woman, and that's that very fact that proves I'm innocent. I, I, did you hear what you just said? Are you looking at this statement right now? I mean, yeah, it's like, I mean, what he's gonna say is she was already dead from the poison, so it didn't matter that he stabbed her. But you still stabbed her, for crying out loud. So why would I bother to stab the woman if I'd already poisoned her? When I heard the student... There was still intent to kill, right? <laughs> when I heard the student girl in that pompous English murder arguing, it got my goat. 
If the courts weren't going to punish Brett for what she did, someone else would have to see justice done. Wait a minute. Is this the first time he's expressed an interest in that? Like, expressed an interest in wanting Giselle Brett to be punished? Everything happened as I described. That you were the one who stabbed Miss Brett in the back through the reed screen. Yeah, well, you know. You can blame this miserable country of ours. A country that bows to the pressure of foreign powers and lets murderers walk free. What kind of future can a country like that have? That's why I did it. I did what our pathetic leaders didn't have the guts to do. Slap bang in the middle of that charming lady's back, I plunged the blade of sweet justice right in there. <sighs> this is a weird situation. Because even if technically he didn't kill her, he still tried to. As someone who spends his life seeing that the truth is told, I feel really, really awful about giving false information. Like, what happens if that, like, in real life, would you prosecute both people? Uh, would that be the right thing to do? Because I, I think it would be, but, like, I don't, I don't know if that's how it works, though. So, uh, I feel really, really awful about giving false information in my testimony before, but as it turns out, there was somebody else who had it in for the victim and got to her before me. This is... wow. I didn't think in a first case we'd run into this. Usually the first cases are like, you know, well, I guess the first case of uh, Great Ace Attorney 1 was pretty long. Maybe a little too long, but still, though. Like, this is a situation. That pretty little student girl, now there's a woman after my own heart. Oh, did you back off. How old are you? Hang on a second. Do we have profiles? Yes, we do. How... I'm not about to stand for this. You are 38 years old! She is 16! Is, is that what he was saying? Oh, that's disgusting, dude. You're implicating Ray again. She's the one who gave the poison to the English woman and ended her pitiful existence. I suppose if he's just saying it's a woman after my own heart, I don't know. You say that about people who are, like, interested in the same things, and maybe he didn't mean it like that, I don't know. It suddenly snapped the journal here is off the hook. The argument is sound, certainly. If the witness had administered the poison himself, he need only have waited for it to take effect. Subsequently stabbing the victim in the back would have been entirely nonsensical. Wow. And therefore this reporter had nothing to do with the poisoning. Yes, it's all quite logical. That's right, it is logical and true. I'm glad you're all seeing the light. You've all seen the light. Justice at last. This is unbelievable. After I've made so much progress in proving his guilt, is he going to get away with it now? Oh, those violins, man. SLAP! Think of Kazuma-sama and Naruhoto-san. They never stopped looking for a way forward until the judge's final gavel. Speaking of the gavel, <laughs> Very well then, counsel, proceed with what I assume to be your final cross-examination in this trial. I assume. Oh, sigh. Yes, Your Excellency. Cross-examination, here we go! Oh yes, I stabbed the English woman, and that's the very fact that proves I'm in this. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous statement that's ever been in one of these games. I have to press it. So you do admit that you had murderous intentions. Ah, intentions, there you go, towards Miss Brethren. The woman's very existence offended my sense of justice. Her sense of... She's claiming some sort of righteous indignation? Ugh. She was pure evil, a cold-blooded killer who committed murder right here on our empire, empire soil. But did our good-for-nothing government do anything? No! So I had to step in. Fly the flag of justice, put things right for the people. Yes, it was my civic duty. That's what drove me to do it. So, in summary, murderous intentions, then. <laughs> thank you. Whatever you want to call it, the point is this. I was taken out the trash. Yeah, I mean, that's basically... Oh, wow. I haven't heard this music in a while. Mm-hmm. Alright, that's what you say. <laughs> Well, that got us nowhere. Besides, why would I bother to stab the one if I already poisoned her? Yeah. 
you still maintain that you didn't give the poison to the victim? Oh, gosh. Okay, what if? What if he did give her the poison? And stabbed her. You know, and then, like, tried to play it off like, well, I didn't kill her because she was already dead and someone else did the poison. Like, if we can't trace the poison, he might have wanted us to catch him on the stabbing just so that it would that we'd be distracted from the poison and not be able to tell. I don't know. So you still maintain that you didn't give the poison to the victim? Obviously! That'd be like putting a belt on your trousers when you were already wearing braces like these! The accused administered the poison in the following which this witness stabbed the victim. An unforgivable act, certainly, but not one of murder. That crime rests on the accused's shoulders. That is how the law works, you see, yokel. Who knows? You may even learn something here today. I'm learning something right now. <laughs> this is fiction, though. Like, there's no way. I mean, obviously. I would think there would still be something, you know, something would still... Like, he may not get tried, like, in the real world, maybe he wouldn't get tried for the crime, but he would still have to face rehabilitation or community service or something. Two consecutive attempts on her life in the space of minutes. Quite a day for the victim. Well, at least one of the worst. So he's thinking, do something that evil and you've got it coming. That's how the law works. The law of reckoning. The day of reckoning. That's not the kind of law this court upholds. You will reiterate why you were compelled to stab the victim then, witness. I don't like you, you know. So when I heard the student girl in that pompous English murder arguing, it got my goat. I mean, what is... Is it what they were arguing about? Like, why did this... I don't know, this is weird. What exactly were they arguing about? About what happened in that restaurant nine months ago, that's what. The student girl was laying into the English woman for killing her beloved mentor, Dr. Wilson. Yes, John H. Wilson, of course. A professor of medicine, invited here from England by Professor Mika Toba, no less. Right, but the English woman just cheered. Her case was to be heard by the British Consular Court in Shanghai. However, there is little doubt that she would simply have been acquitted and sent back to her homeland a free woman. It was eating that student girl up inside. You could see it. I really felt for her. Oh, I'm sure. I am sure you did. Whoa, hang on. Wait, what? What's going on? Oh, of course. I can't. I can't stand here and listen to this tripe. Damn. Young girl, get out of my heart. My love for you is way out of line. Better run, girl. You're much too young, girl. No, you can't. Sorry, but I'm in the middle of some very important testimony here, so shut the fuck up. I will not shut the fuck up. You said... But this awful man is making up all this stuff. Oh. Susano, please, you have to make him listen. Really? Return to the dock at once, mimbami san We are in the middle of a cross-examination here. Well, I don't know. I mean, I think if she has something to say or, like, contribute, if he's talking about her, you know, she has the right to defend herself. That journalist is clearly not a trustworthy witness. <laughs> you don't say. You don't say! Exactly, he's a filthy, rotten, black-hearted, bigoted, dirty, great peeping Tom. Damn. He's a peeping Tom. Well, take it easy there. Please, I really think the court should hear what the defendant has to say. We haven't gone through all my statements yet. Your Excellency, I see no need whatsoever to entertain the accused remarks. So she just had to sit there and he can tell all the lies he wants about her? Screw that. Yeah, thank you. Oh, God, thank you, Judge. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> this is likely to be the final cross-examination of these proceedings. As such, I believe it would be ill-advised to stifle the defendant's obvious concerns. So, whilst recognizing that this contravenes regular protocol, I hereby call upon the defendant to speak. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Oh my gosh. Wow, so now she's on the fourth statement, and he's still the third. Wait, so who's is the fifth? It was nothing to do with Dr. Wilson. We were discussing the stolen poison. Oh, he's still the fifth, though. Oh. Wow, this is weird, because after I press four, she'll probably have the fifth statement. So what if I never get to press this one? I mean, if the corns weren't going to punish Brett for what she did, someone else would have to see what she's done. Uh, but what's that someone else? You, Mini Meadow Song? You, Mr. Vigilante? No comment. Sorry? 
You shouldn't even be pressing me. It's her turn to talk, right? You wanted her to talk. Why are you talking to me? It was the accused who sent the English woman to hell. I just waved her off, that's all. Wow. Dude. Alright, yes, I got my hands a little dirty in the process, it's true. But you listen to me. My blade was restless at the injustice of, the injustice of it all. The woman got what she deserved. I say we should all applaud the young student girl for having the courage to rid the world of that menace. Really? It hasn't been proven that the defendant did anything of the sort. <laughs> well, sorry about that. <laughs> Slip of the tongue. But now you can't unhear it, you know? If the victim had unwittingly taken the poison already, the reporter would have had no reason to stab her. On the face of it, that logic sounds entirely reasonable. But there's no question that this man was responsible for Miss Brett's murder. If we could think of a plausible explanation as to why he might have stabbed her even after the poisoning. Is it what I was saying earlier, to throw us off? I feel sure that everything would drop into place. That's what we should be looking for. Yes, I agree. And in order to do that, I must try to glean more information. Alright, so let's go back to statement four. That very fancy piece I'm going to say. Yeah, okay, so two, three, four. Here we go. It was nothing to do with Dr. Wilson. We were discussing the stolen poison. Tell me more. The stolen poison that killed the victim, you mean? I suspected her of being the one to steal it. I mean, just think about how she killed Dr. Wilson. That's true. Additionally, Miss Brett certainly had knowledge of the new poison. But surely it will be no easy task to steal a highly secret toxin being developed for the government. Right, Ethan? Wait, you're playing Super Smash. Never mind. Indeed, all visitors to the laboratory are thoroughly searched when they leave. Aha. Uh -huh. Even if a thief managed to avoid being seen by myself or Kali, getting the poison out would be very difficult. That's true. I pestered Professor Mikotobo until he agreed to show me the poison when I visited his laboratory. But as I left, I was searched from top to tail. <laughs> top to tail. Miss Brett rather bluntly revealed the existence of the toxin we'd been developing, you see. And since Sosuke-san expressed so much an interest in it, I felt unable to refuse. Obviously, I gave nothing away, other than the fact that it was an extremely potent substance. I'm very ashamed of myself. It's just that I've had a singularly terrible experience with a deadly poison. I wanted to look my old enemy in the eye! Surely you can understand that? Teeth? To find out if my suspicions were true, I confronted Miss Brett about the poison. I told her that if there were to be an incident involving it somehow, it just wouldn't just be the university. Wait a minute, I told her if there were to be an incident involving it somehow. The military would be dragged into it too. The whole government even. It would be a complete disaster. Ugh. And how did Miss Brett respond to your concerns? She didn't give a shit. She just curled those beautiful lips of hers and said she didn't know the first thing about it. In English, actually. In English? Oh yes, many men have saw one small question if you don't mind. Anything. I do mind. Can't you see I'm busy? You're a witness on the stand, dude! What are you doing right when you're writing your life story in there or something? Jeez, man. Clearly you were outside the beach listening in whilst the defendant and Miss Brett were conversing. Presumably, then, it was you who wrote this article about what you'd heard. Oh, huh? Exclusive. Deadly poison stolen from Yume Medical Research Laboratory. The story was published in this morning's edition of Sho Shoyu News. The details are too accurate for it to have been written by anyone else. Hmm. Sorry, don't know what you're talking about. He's been sweating. Yes, look at this. The entire article. It's almost what I said to Miss Brett word for word. Ah, I knew it. Listen, I, I was about to say, my mind was already set up to say word for word before it even showed up, and then it did. Hmm. As a journo, I have no problem plagiarizing other people's conversations. I don't have to reveal my sources. That's a founding principle of many mentalism. Father's clearly right about this. That reporter did write that article, and he based it on what he overheard from outside the hut. Hmm. Alright then. So that's what it was all about. You were trying to cover up the fact that you were listening in. That's why you came up with that stinking story about me arguing with her. Shut up! My stories never stink. Look, whatever you say, little girl, it doesn't alter the facts. Your Excellency, there's something I want to say. I wanted to go on record. Okay. Very well, you may amend your formal testimony. Oh, jeez. Oh. oh, Finkel and Einhorn. Einhorn and Finkel. You just get more and more riled up. 
point is if you poison someone, there'd be no reason to then go and stab the person as well. Didn't we just press that already? So he still has the fifth statement. Interesting. Well, I already pressed this, I'm pretty sure. Mm. I'm gonna press it again just to make sure, but I, I think I already pressed it. Perhaps you doubted the efficacy of the poison and sought to make sure your victim would die. Oh, wait a minute. Um, that's horse dung. <laughs> what? That would be like pouring pepper on your Chinese ramen before you even tasted it. Completely reckless. No, this is different. <laughs> Although it might surprise you to learn that I am a bit of an impetuous pepper pourer, as it happens. Why are we highlighting pepper pourer? Once the victim had taken the poison, she would have only been minutes away from death. Or are we going to bring a lion in here and start making him sneeze? I'll tell you what. If this man then proceeded to stab her in the back as well. There has to have been a good reason for that. If it was the reporter who gave the poison to Miss Brett, then clearly, he must have done it prior to re-entering the hut. Yeah. That's undeniable. But there's no way in hell we can prove that. Or is there? But between him leaving the hut and the victim being stabbed, there was one very crucial change in the situation. Sorry? What change? The reporter overheard the conversation between Ray and the English woman. Huh. So, would he not have stabbed her if he hadn't heard the conversation? Is that what you're telling me? Maybe he stabbed her because he didn't want her to drink it? But yeah, that's really doing her a favor, stabbing her so she doesn't take a drink. Hmm. The victim had all willing to take the poison already, the reporter no reason to stab her on the face of it. That was really, 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 really. He's been trying to stab her to get the poison back out. He's gonna suck the wound, you know? <laughs> we can think of a plausible explanation as to why he might have stabbed her even after the poison. I feel sure that everything would drop into place. Oh, this is rough, because now I gotta remember what, who knows what here. In order to do that, I must try to glean more information. Well, I think I've gleaned just about everything I can glean. Let me go over these and make sure nobody else is reacting to anything here. Because, you know, sometimes other, other, uh, like, other witnesses react to what they hear. I think it's too early for that, though. They'll introduce that later in the game. I mean, this is related to the poison. I don't really know if this is going to work, but I'm going to try it. Are you serious? Well, I can think of one reason. Okay, um... Jeez. But before I explain, I'd like you to confirm something for the court. Sure, yeah. Did you clean all the information for this newspaper article from what you overheard outside the HUD? Of course he did! There could be no question of that! Sorry, I was talking like Mr. Payne for a second there. After all, when we were all in the laboratory together, all we were told is that it was a terrible toxin. And there is one more important fact to consider. According to the witness, mimbami sans verbal attack against the victim began as soon as she entered the hut. In other words, it would have been impossible for her to have slipped the poison into Miss Brett's drink. Oh, yeah. Where are you going with this, counsel? Yeah, give me a minute, I'm getting there. Many men of Sans said has made it quite clear that he observed every single thing that happened in the beach hut. If the defendant had somehow found an opportunity, this man would have seen it. There you go. He would have said something. He just got straight to the point. Which means that Miss Brett couldn't have imbibed the poison whilst the defendant was present. In fact, it must have been administered to her before Mimbami San entered the hut. Yes, very articulately put. When I walked into the hut, I immediately started to press Miss Brett about the poison. Not knowing she had already drunk it. At which point, many memo saw overheard some worrying information. Worrying information? What worrying information? About the poison, you dumbass! The information which he subsequently included in his newspaper article, namely, that the poison was being developed in strict secrecy and that it couldn't be readily, readily obtained. Absolutely. In fact, that's quite an understatement. The only possible place it could come from is my lab. Are you sure nobody else was making it? Like, maybe somebody else got the recipe or whatever? <laughs> the recipe, I tell ya. And furthermore, anyone afflicted by the poison would exhibit telltale signs in death. 
The extreme constriction of the pupils. Yes, it's quite stark when you see it. There are other poisons that show similar symptoms, but not among new substances that are undetectable. In other words, it would be clear that the victim's life had been ended by the use of this particular poison. Damn it! Which would reduce the number of suspects to only a handful of people. Just people who were there at the beat. Everyone in my laboratory is aware of the unique properties of the toxin we've been developing. None of them would be foolish enough to attempt to use it for some nefarious deed. They wouldn't dare. And Mani san being no exception. Therefore, we can conclude that whoever administered this unique poison to the victim was a layperson, unaware of its telltale properties. Are we sure? In other words, someone like you, Raiden, Raiden. <laughs> there he goes again. <coughs> <clears throat> it was you who stole the poison from the laboratory that day, and it was you who administered it to the unwitting victim. But you quickly realized that was a terrible mistake, because the poison caused such unusual symptoms and was so traceable. Uh-oh. As you listened in from the far side of the beach hut's thin walls, you learned of these facts. Well, like, here's the thing, though. It, never mind. But you'd already given the victim the poison at that point. It was too... So did he give it to her not knowing what it was? How did he get it anyway? Like, I don't think he even worked at the lab. Somebody must have, like, gotten it for him. Maybe he did work at the lab. I forget, like, who worked there and who didn't. So you hatched a plan to disguise your mistake. A plan that involves stabbing the victim in the back through the reed screen. But, but what good could that possibly do? It'd get her out of the way. <laughs> Isn't it obvious, Council? The plan was to kill Miss Brett before the poison could take effect. Uh... Hmm. Once in the blood, the poison causes the onset of pupil constriction. But he had hoped to pre precipitate the victim's death before that happened, hadn't he? So otherwise someone would have been able to tell. Because without any revealing signs of the new secret poison's use, no one would ever have suspected. This is extraordinary! Holy crap, you guys! How are you so good at this? Yes, the effects of the poison meant it would be too easily identified so the killer had to mask its use. Which he attempted to do by plunging a knife into the middle, middle of the victim's back. PLUNGING, I tell ya! Oh my god, this guy in his hands. <laughs> Order! The argument presented is sound. The court is satisfied that it warrants consideration. Does the prosecution have a counter-argument it wishes to put forward? Well, there are a number of them. I mean, yes, I counter completely. Objection. How so? The prosecution's evasive response clearly shows that he don't know what he's doing, and that in much the same way he nurtures the remnants of his top knot, he is clinging to lost hope. Damn, dude. Mm hmm That hat is still on his head. He's just frozen there. Oh, what now? Jesus Christ, how many times is this gonna happen? <laughs> that, that will never not be funny. Oh, he's had it. He's like, get off my face, you frickin' hat. You pathetic, useless, fallen samurai. Fallen? Who are you calling fallen? My burgeoning growth is on... I don't need a counter-argument. You know what I just realized? He looks like Gaston. <laughs> what are you talking about? It should be blatantly obvious. I wish I knew the song better. I'd start singing it. Jeez. I saw the poison, you say. Give it to the victim, you say. Stabbed her, you say. Lots of fine theories. But I don't need a counter-argument because you don't have an argument yourself. Where's your evidence? Uh, shit. Yes, you make it all sound so plausible, don't you? But without evidence, it means nothing. Whereas I base my news on facts. Facts? What the hell do you mean? Explain yourself! I mean only this! What the professor said earlier in his trial. It's all here, in my many memos. Every word. Every slip of the tongue, all noted. That's what the show you news is famous for. It's the power of the printed word. Wow. I keep- every time it cuts to the judge, I look at that glass to his left. That's a weird looking glass and I don't know what's in there. It looks almost like a bottle of Tylenol. Like those little cups that you pour the medicine into? Ugh. 
But surely it would be no easy task to steal a highly secret toxin being developed for the government. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Indeed, all visitors to the laboratory are thoroughly searched when they leave. Meow. You wonder too, Kirby. You're so sweet. Look at you. Even if a thief managed to avoid being seen by myself or a colleague, getting the poison out would be very difficult. How's that then? Blown the story wide open? See, I, Rate Raiden, a, a mere reporter from the Show You News, couldn't possibly have stolen that poison from the professor's laboratory. That's what I was saying earlier. I was wondering about that, actually. Like, it seems too... weird. But there can't be any question of the eight lumps that are on my head now. He must have stolen the poison that day. He stole it and used it to kill! God damn it! And if that's the case... Well, the thing is, he stole the poison without knowing how bad it was, because he didn't realize how bad it was until he heard the conversation. So, like, are we sure that he even stole it at all? Or maybe somebody else stole it and gave it to him, told him to give it to her or something. As you've identified, the poison itself is the definitive evidence we need. Because whoever stole it from the laboratory that day is the true culprit here. What's your point, you annoyingly handsome country blumpkin? Okay, so, like... My guess is she stole it. The victim stole it. Giselle Brett stole it. And maybe... I still think we're not done with the pen yet, either. My point is only this. There's one way that you, Mini memo san could have stolen the poison that day. What? I've heard enough verbal conjecture now, thank you. What the court must be shown is evidence. Edgeworth evidence. Anyway. What proof do you have that this witness stole the poison on the day in question? Shit, dude! Um, I'm gonna stop here for a second. This might not be the end of the video, I don't know, but, uh, I, yeah, I have to stop because it's at 103 here. So, I'll be right back.